to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith, and today we are going to be diving into the strategy of the Red Queen in the Disney Villainous board game. Now, the Red Queen has a very particular way to win, and one of the great things about it is that she can win a very, very quick victory. And what I mean by that is that some characters actually have to meet their win conditions and then wait until it's the start of their turn in order to win. But the Red Queen can actually hit that win condition and win the game immediately. And because of this, she comes off as a very, very hard to stop character, as well as a very easy character to win with. So what exactly is her goal and how exactly does she win? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. The Red Queen has to put down four card guards and then activate each of them individually to turn each of them into a wicket. Once you have a wicket at each of the four locations in her realm, you have to pay four power to play the take a shot card. Then you're going to grab all of the wickets, you're going to add that strength and put it up against the next five cards in your deck. Whatever the total cost of those cards is, if your strength is higher than that number or equal to, you won the game. Now the Red Queen has a lot of awesome mechanics as well as some really cool cards at her disposal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of her cards as well as the four locations in her realm and then lastly I'm going to go over three tips and strategies that are going to help you win in your next game of Villainous. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching. Now the take a shot card is going to be one of the most important cards in your deck because you will have to use it in order to win the game. Now you're going to want to try to keep a mental track of where these are in your deck. You've got three of them, but let's say you use a take a shot card and one of the cards that you're drawing at the top of your deck is a take a shot card. This is the most expensive card at your deck and you don't want it working against you. So try to keep track of how many you've pulled and be sure to keep one aside for whenever your wickets are ready for action. Now we definitely have to talk about the card guards. She has a couple of them at her disposal. They come in each of the four card suits. So they come in spades, clubs, hearts, and diamonds. And spades and hearts are actually uh, a little bit stronger. They cost a little bit more, but they have a little bit of extra strength. So whenever you're placing them down, try to get those ones down if you can manipulate that. Really with these, I would recommend not using them to defeat creatures as well as never activate them to turn them from wickets back into card guards. Guards. If you have changed them into wickets, keep them as wickets and just try to wait till you get that take a shot. Now other than the card guards, Tweedledee and Tweedledum are the only ally in your deck. And these guys are going to be very, very important in order to remove cards from your realm if you must. In fact, one of the most powerful things you can do with these guys is to attach spears to them because when they remove opponents from your realm, they do not get removed. So kind of cycling through your deck, making sure that these guys are the ones to remove opponents is going to be a really good strategy. When you get Tweedledee and Tweedledum, go ahead and play them. A Very Merry Unbirthday is a great card to gain a little bit of extra power. When you draw it, just go ahead and play it, seeing as it doesn't cost anything, but it's really good to kind of cycle through your deck that way. Don't hold on to it and wait for the right moment. That's one that you're just going to want to play whenever you get a chance if you have some card guards on the field. And now that we have looked at her cards, let's go ahead and look at the four locations in the Queen of Hearts realm. Now the courtyard is a super useful location because it has the move an item or an ally action. And you'll need to use this in order to manipulate the movement of Tweedledee and Tweedledum. If you want them to be the defender of your realm and be able to remove the allies, you're going to have to use this action right here. This location also has two power and allows you to play a card. At the beginning of the game, you can quite happily alternate between the courtyard and the hedge maze to gain power and play card guards until an opponent realizes what you're doing. The hedge maze is the second location in her realm and you'll be spending a lot of time at the hedge maze. It allows you to do all of the things that you want to do most in the game. Play card guards, activate their wicked ability, and also to gain power. Now here you can play two cards in one turn and gain three power. That is enough to get two card guards out in one turn and then you can activate one of them using their activated ability. Tolgi Wood is the third spot, and this is the only location with a Vanquish action on it, but it will give you no power if you go here. And you are the Queen of Hearts, so you will need a lot of power. Now, 
only go to Togi Wood if you really need to get rid of somebody. There are better locations for you to use otherwise to gain more power and to play those card guards. And lastly, we have the White Rabbit's House. Now, the White Rabbit's House is an okay location and will let you do a little bit of the things that you need. You only gain one power and you can play one card and activate a card guard, but it's just not as good as the hedge maze for those actions, so you might as well just go there. However, you might need to go there if a hero has blocked the activate action in the hedge maze. You will definitely need to have this one accessible in case that happens. And now that we have looked at the locations in her realm, let's go ahead and break down three tips and strategies that will help you play her better. Now my first tip for you is to use your power wisely. Now with the cheapest card guards used, Queen of Hearts 2 in the game costs 12 power. And that's not even including all of the effects and the other cards that you're going to be playing throughout the game. So she is a very expensive character to play. And so what I mean by that is you really got to manipulate your cards as best as possible to kind of stock up on some extra power. You're going to need it, especially when one of your wickets is removed or turned back up right into a card guard. You're going to have to have some sort of a reserve. So my first tip, once again, use your power wisely. And I may have said this already, in fact I know I did, but you're going to have to remember, do not change your wickets back into card guards. This is a very, very dangerous trap where you're paying more power and then you're gonna have to pay the power to turn them back into wickets. And with the first tip in mind, do not waste your power, you're going to need all of it. So, second tip, do not change your wickets back into card guards. Play to win the game. Really, your only goal is your own. You're going to try to get those wickets out as fast as possible and take that shot. So focus on the game of crochet that you have at hand. This is the Queen of Hearts specialty, kind of being under the radar and really coming out of nowhere and winning the game. She can win very, very fastly. Maybe building up your board and then playing two wickets as well as getting some activations and kind of surprising the rest of the opponents with four wickets really, really quickly that's going to be the way that you're going to win. Try to keep under the radar the entire game and try to make everyone else believe that you are far away from your goal. And with that, that is it for the Queen of Hearts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that the next game that you play of Villainous, that you'll be able to win your first game of crochet. But before you go, go ahead and drop a like as well as comment down below what your favorite character from Alice in Wonderland is. And lastly, if you liked content like this and want to know when more videos are released, go ahead and click the bell notification to be reminded when my next video comes out. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this today. And with that, let's drop the beat.